Todd, Lewis, good to see you. Uh, thank you for taking your time to do this interview. Really do appreciate it. I got some questions from the MK community and myself. So if you guys are ready, we can uh, start this thing. Let's Thanks, do it. Guys. All right, the first question is for you, Makad. So this one's from our buddy, Caboose, and he asks, Jax is such an iconic character from the games. What did you do to prepare on bringing this character to life in live action? Great question, Caboose. Um, the, so Jax being this, this iconic character, there's pressure involved whenever you're playing somebody that people uh, particularly um, have as an extension of their, of their motor skills or their nervous system because they're playing, they're, they're actually controlling the character. So they're going to have a strong opinion about what that character um, is to them. And, um, you know, as an actor, you, you take that into consideration. But at the same time, like, I'm such a huge fan of Mortal Kombat myself. Like, I wanted this character to succeed as much as anybody else did. Um, so we, we brought that fandom within ourselves to the, to the roles and, and, and to set every day. Um, what I did as an actor to prepare was a lot of Jax is about his backstory. Like, so who do you have to be to hunt monsters? You gotta be a monster. Well, how'd you get there? Well, he was special forces, um, but how do you go from being special forces to SEAL Team Six or on the team that goes and gets El Chapo or something like that to advancing and graduating to hunting multi-dimensional ninjas and monsters and stuff like that? And I always go back to this Ernest Hemingway quote that I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna butcher which is um, once you've hunted and killed trained men long enough, you have little appetite for anything else. And that's when we, when we meet Jax, that's where he's at. He's this, he's become a monster to catch monsters. And, um, you know, I kind of I put him through a therapy session. I journaled as him. I was like, well, what did I have to go through? Like how many people did he have to um, commit fatalities on to get to where he's at? uh wh what what does that do to a person like what's his mind state and at the same time you know walk that fine line of being big enough to be a video game character but also based in physics and based in reality enough to come off as a real person so uh it was fun a lot of fun that is amazing all right uh next question for lewis and this one says i read that ufc fighter jorge mazada helped inspire your work as cole young in the film with that said, did any other particular MK characters help inspire you as well? I would say that the Mortal Kombat game in itself was an inspiration in a way because I'm playing a new character, right? So, and I'm in this world with all these iconic, um, very thought out, deeply layered characters. Um, and I don't want to get lost. One, I don't want to get lost. Two, I want to deliver something to the fans that's not just another character to kind of show the world of Mortal Kombat through. I want Cole to um, ha have an authentic presence. Um, so physically and emotionally, that was my goal to deliver that as an actor and as a martial artist. Authenticity, truth, groundedness. And I want people to walk away from this and think that that was a really enjoyable character that has earned his place in this world, in this franchise, you know? Um, so the energy of the game itself, knowing about the game, I've been playing the game since I was a kid. And so kind of knowing the tone and the vibe of what works really well for Mortal Kombat um, helped a lot. And uh, yeah, there was some, there was some characters in the, um, there's some characters in the game that um, I pulled from. Um, in different ways, in different aspects. Um, and then, yeah, Jorge Masvidal, uh, his, his, his body language, he's like a salt of the earth kind of gritty fighter that used to fight bare knuckle boxing in, the, in, in people's backyards. And I like his uh, hustling mentality. I like his, his uh, grit and his uh, determination to succeed. And uh, no matter what, you know, and I feel that way as an actor, I feel that way as an Asian, person who's in this business that's predominantly controlled um uh you know by uh caucasian people and in hollywood for a long time we wouldn't even get a shot so there's a lot of similarities to contrast for cole um he wants to find his place and he wants to you know prove himself and he wants his shot at at uh becoming someone and um i feel like uh, i pulled from all those things and more that is an amazing answer, Lewis. 
All right, so the next few questions are for both you guys, so feel free to chime in whenever you guys want. First question is from me, and that question is, I know you guys love your characters, Jax and Cole Young, but let's say in a hypothetical different universe, if you guys could play a different character in the Mortal Kombat movies, what character would that be? <laughs> That's a good question. Great question. Go ahead, bro. Um, man, I mean, there's there's a couple, but I, I think I think Ermac is incredible. Um, just the, just 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 the power, right? Just like almost having these like almost like these X Men type superpowers that'd be amazing. Um, but I but I also grew up. I mean, I grew up playing playing with Scorpion a lot, and I was like I was Scorpion like five Halloweens in a row as a kid to the point where my family made fun of me. And so they're like, yo, so I guess, I guess Makai's going to be Scorpion again for Halloween. So <laughs> I, I would say Ermac or, uh, or Scorpion for sure. When we were, when we were on set, there was this one time we were in the costume, uh, costume department area where they have all the wardrobe and stuff. And um, we go in mm. at different times. So it's not like too busy and too, you know, too, too crazy in there. But one time I saw Makai and he was in there. And he was just holding the scorpion mask, and I just saw like a <laughs> small, I just saw like a small tear fall from his eye. <laughs> he just put it back down. And I was like, I was like, had you? Are you guys sure that you you casted this yet? Have you casted <laughs> this? Have you casted Scorpion yet? I was like, it could be kind of a cool twist to make Scorpion a brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I would. I, yeah. I'd be down for that. <laughs> I'd be down for that um i that's a great question i would i uh okay look there's a lot of characters that i that i thought about that i would want to play um realistically if i were to cast myself i think it'd be cool to play kenshi because i can i can uh i'm pretty proficient with a sword and i like i, I just like his story and i like the idea of playing blind and stuff and then uh but if i were to cast myself um for just for fun i would want to play smoke because I think we could do some really cool stuff with him. And when I was young, when I was playing the video game, I'd always play with Smoke just because he was just a badass ninja with a gray outfit. And, you know, he could just pull and disappear. And I was like, yep, that's it. And um, so, yeah, that'd be kind of cool to bring to the big screen and uh, do it in the kind of the tone that we did this movie in. Um, maybe, I can, maybe I can figure that out for the sequel. We'll see. Also, I'm not mad at Kolo Khan. Like, I'm like, you know, like the whole Mayan sort of just like. Yeah, the, I could see you the, doing that, man. I, I could I could pull off the Kolo Khan. Like, I mean, obviously, you know. One I don't time, wanna... one time when we were filming from, <laughs> for Makad's birthday, this is actually a true story. We, I came over <laughs> to his, his crib and he was like decked out in like Kolo Khan beads and like all this crazy <laughs> stuff. And like we sat down and he had this like sound healer come in and they were playing these yeah. like songs yeah. and everything. It's true. It's true. I was like, took me to another, another realm. It was crazy. Yeah, man. So I could see that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of dressed like Kodo Khan in my real life. Like at home. <laughs> it's true. It is what it is. I'm all dressed up right now, but yeah. Catch me at the Kodo crib. Wow, those are some pretty solid picks right there. Now I kind of want to see a storyline, maybe in the sequel, uh, where you guys play as these alternate characters. That would be amazing. Um, all right, so our next question is from our buddy Kenny, aka Unruly, and he asked, your character has unique arcana or power in the film. What would your real life arcana be? Man, that's a great question, Ken. Um, I think... Well, see, so the, the interesting thing that, that I really loved about Arcana was that it comes from a place of, of, of how you respond to um, something horrible or the, tr the, the traumatic intervention that happens to the character, right? So there, there's something that's really traumatic that makes the character, that stops the pattern of the character and then all of a sudden they respond in a way that's heroic. And so um, I think mine is the same as Jack's in some ways where like um, his story and my story are um, alike in some ways where life had, had torn me down in some ways, had, had really delivered me uh, some, 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 some trauma. And um, you know, I, got, I got hit by a car in 2011 and I went into a coma. 
uh, two years earlier than that, on the same day, I, I had I had a I had a near death experience, but I flatlined in the hospital. Um, but whatever happens to your physical body, that doesn't mean it happens to your heart, right? So <clears throat> that's kind of what's happening with Jax in the movie, in that like you know his his his, his physical body is is it's just not working. It's 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 completely broken, and um, his heart carries him through. And uh, that's that's actually happened to me in my life. And um, so I think we have the same arcana. Well, that's going to be hard to follow, but... Um, I, sh- I should have one second. <laughs> nah, bro, that's incredible. That's an incredible story, man. Um, I think that, look, we, we all feel, like Makad said it really beautifully, but I think that we all feel, especially as like, you know, diverse actors and people in this, in an industry that's not set up to, to, for you in any way, shape or form, we're constantly fighting this feeling. And it's, it's this determination and it's this, this unrelentlessness that, you know, um, finally, like you start to see some change and you start to see some breakthrough. Um, I think that like Makah was saying, the arcana concept comes from this idea that like, with pressure, you can either, you know, be crushed or you can create diamonds out of the pressure. Um, I stole that from, from, from my boy here, but, but yeah, man, it's like, and, but, but I do feel that way. And it's also kind of like, that's how I feel in real life too. So it's one of those things where you look at these posters up in all over Hollywood um, and all over the world, actually, of all these diverse actors and these crazy cool, you know, roles where they're playing badasses and heroes. And then at the same time, you're watching the news and you're seeing, you know, these the Black Lives Matter movement. You're seeing the stop the Asian hate, you know, and it's a crazy concept. It's a crazy feeling. The movie is so perfectly timed that it, it's, it could, it's only the universe that can align this type of thing um, for this current time. And um and I'm not saying that like, you know, Mortal Kombat is the solution to this. Obviously, that's not what it is. But seeing ourselves in a different light and seeing ourselves, uh, you know, be included in the culture um, and uh, in, especially in this way is very powerful. And um, so I, I'm proud of that. So, yeah, my arcana would be consistency and persistence and uh, the uh, pursuit of, of, of breaking boundaries. Wow, those are some deep answers right there. I was just gonna say like super speed or like, I don't know, invisibility, but you guys uh, thought hard and long about this. So props to you guys. Our next question is from our buddy J Shock Blast. A lot of questions from our friends, hope that's okay. Um, J Shock Blast asked, what was your exposure to the MK games growing up? And you kind of briefly talked about this, but what are some of your favorite characters in the games? Yeah, I, I would say, I would say my, my favorites um, were Scorpion and Jax actually. Um, like I, like I mentioned before, I, I would, I, I think I would literally, I think I messed this up before, but I think what it was, was I was Scorpion and then Superman for Halloween every year for like 10 years. So it was like Scorpion and, and Superman, Scorpion. So like, those were my, those were my go-tos. And, um, I remember my, my, one of my earliest memories with uh, Mortal Kombat was I, we, we got them, we got the home version of the game. And I remember we were like eating pizza on the floor and like playing the game, me and my brothers and everything. And then like, we're going crazy. And then like, it's 8 p.m. And I think I think I uh, I played that game until 10 o'clock in the morning and my mom came out like, you know, to make us breakfast and like Saturday morning cartoons and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, and she's like, did you sleep? And I was like saying lines from the video game instead of answering her, I'm like, finish him. She's like, well, who are you? <laughs> that's that's who I was yeah I was the kid playing all night yeah um yeah again I mean I had I have three younger brothers so uh I grew up in a household where we played a lot of video games Mortal Kombat was one of those games for years uh I remember playing Mortal Kombat Trilogy um I I don't know which game I played first I played all three of the first three I I remember distinctively playing all those with my brothers but Trilogy was just the game that we had that that was the one that we played the most and i just remember there being like so many different characters and then after like after you realize that there was other things besides the fatalities there was like animalities and babalities and friendships like you and every character had their own one 
I remember like printing this like big old spreadsheet. I'm supposed to be like doing homework. And I remember this, like, I forget this website. It's like cheap game <laughs> shark website, whatever it was called. Yeah. And you get it. And then like you print it all. And then like you would have like all the cheats and all the codes for all the moves. And I just sit there and like try to do them all. Um, I think that's one of the things that makes Mortal Kombat so interesting is uh, the creativity of it all and um, uh, how much time you could actually spend trying new techniques and new new moves and stuff. So yeah, it was a it was a big part of my childhood, and my mom didn't like me playing it. So, ha ha, mom. <laughs> Look at me now. Got it. So they're giving me the signal that I have time for one more question. So. This one is from Christian, the final one, so no pressure on your answers or anything like that. But he asked, was playing in an MK film ever a thought or a goal in mind? And what was it like when you guys got casted in these roles? It, you know what? Honestly, like, I, nev I never imagined it. Like, it didn't occur to me. But at the same time, when I, when I, when I first got the audition, and, and I, 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 I don't want this to come off the wrong way, but I... But I I just, I just said to myself, well, this is it. Like, I, I got this. And it was like, it was more like, it wasn't a confidence thing as more as, as much as it was a, um, a, a, an ambition thing and that I was going to work. And, and, you know, listen, there, there's, you, you, you put in the work, you, you, you put in the work in the audition, you put in the work in the quantum, but you also, there's a, there's a lot of luck involved as well. Right. And so I'm not um, saying that like, Oh well, uh, this was my role as soon as I saw it. But like something felt right when I when I read the name Jax at the top of the audition, where it just sort of felt like second nature, and it kind of felt like a future memory in a way. And I was kind of like, huh? I was like, yeah, this this feels right. This seems right. And it just sort of flooded back to me how much this game had been part of my life, my entire life. And like I I just it was in the it was in the back of my consciousness, but it wasn't like something that I, I, I planned on doing or expected me to do. I didn't even know that they were gonna make a movie. Uh, but once I got the audition, I was like, oh, I, I, I gotta get this. I gotta, so. Well, it seems like you manifested that and the Superman thing as well. So you must have uh, <laughs> some sort of skill when it comes to that. Um, well, not must, I, I, I know you do because we've talked about it, but yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it's a little bit, it was a little different. I mean, look, I, as, a, as, as, as someone who, you know, most of my career has been based around these action movies. And um, I'm very particular with the movies that I choose to do and the shows that I choose to do because I wanna make sure that I preserve the authenticity and the legacy of my father's work and everything that he did before me and the martial artists who I've trained with my whole life. Um, I don't just take take stuff just to take stuff. Um, my team will tell you that because they've they've been very frustrated with a, a few different decisions. But I um, wasn't sure the way that they were going to go with this film. So when I first got it, I was I was hesitant to take it um, to take the audition because I just didn't want to be that dude that messed up Mortal Kombat remake. You know that just like that would be a a, a that would be a step back for me. And, you know, I'm happy with the work that I've chosen so far and happy with the way that it's came out. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I was hesitant about it until I spoke to the director who, Simon, who played me the Benjamin Wallfish score. So the first thing mm. I ever heard in this entire process was the, was the, was the music. And Same I was here. Like, yeah. And I was yeah. like, wow. Okay. Um, I see, I, I'm, I, I got a clear idea of the tone that they want to go for here. And then right. hearing Simon talk about Mortal Kombat so passionately, I was like, okay, this man knows about Mortal Kombat. He's not just like walking up in here, like, you know, trying to direct this movie. Um, but then I had to also discover like what they were going to do with the action and how that was going to play out. And if I could be a part of that collaboration in any way, and what was the deal with that, you know, the choreography, how this was going to get, get done. And then they hired freaking Joe Taslam. And I was like, dude, right. they're making all the right choices. I'm like, this is like lining up to be something really incredible. And is it going to be that? And there's always that like nervousness. Anyway, I took the, uh, took the audition and uh, got the part. And once I did, I, you know, I just like seeing what they've done with this project and how much everyone on set cares and loves like Joe Taslam could probably be like 
eight out of ten people that are good at the game. He he is, he yeah. is amazing at the game. And there's a, a, a lot of people on set that care deeply about it. You know, go ahead. What are you going to say? I was going to say, I, I, I dare you, any of you gamers, to challenge Joe Chaslam to play Mortal Kombat. He will whoop your ass. Oh, really now? Okay, well, then maybe when Mortal Kombat 2 starts filming and I'm on set because I'm in the movie, right, guys? No? Still not in the movie? All right, cool. Um, Joe and I can throw hands in Mortal Kombat. I'm pretty sure Joe could beat me up in real life. I mean, all you guys could probably beat me up. But in the video game, you're stepping into my world, baby. You're stepping into my world. Um, I'm telling you. <laughs> Don't tell keep me down. Keep me down. Ass. We'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. We'll, we'll all play. But Don't yeah, um, <laughs> the um, the the authenticity and the respect for the the intention behind everyone's motivations for being in this movie, not just as diverse actors who want to prove themselves, who want to re represent you know their culture and represent um, them the the picture of them that people have in their minds in a different way, but not not only that like truly people that love this franchise and truly people that want to make this franchise you know a big Mar uh, marvel universe type of thing and you know a mortal Kombat universe if you will so mku uh, mku, MKU baby. Here, baby so yeah here, we did baby. our best for that and um the yeah. response has been overwhelming so and you guys have helped a lot with that so thank you all because yeah. Thank you. We watched all your videos and, you know, the reactions yeah. and even just like yeah. everything that comes out new that you guys respond to um, yeah. really helps promote the film. So we appreciate it. That is freaking awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching the videos. Because we're true fans, too. Right. So like it, it's it, it lets us know that that you guys you guys are the first line of defense. So we really appreciate it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So thank and you we very can much. and we consistently thought about that on set when we were making we decisions. Did. We were like, "Oh no, nah, people are gonna hate this. People are gonna hate this. Let's yeah. just do this." You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. yeah, we all thought about it from the top to the bottom, uh, from the producers to the directors to uh, to ourselves. We would argue about it. We'd be googling stuff, checking things out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, Ooh. that which reminds me, which reminds me, when you guys watch the movie again, because I know you will. Um, there's a there's there's a fight scene. Uh, between me and Sub Zero, look at the graffiti in the background. That's just one. There's so there's so. I'm many. just gonna say, there's look so at the graffiti many. in the background. There's so many Easter eggs, and and like, and like when the more you watch the movie, you're gonna see that there's 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 stuff in there that there's Easter eggs in there for the real real fans and the gamers. Okay, so so there's a there's a scene too, you know, in the beginning when um when Cole goes into that the burger restaurant and the menu on the menu on the wall. Just look at the menu on the wall. Like it, it's, it's, we're not going to tell you crazy. what it is. I mean, yes. just the Easter eggs in this movie are endless. I got pictures of endless. it all that eventually I'll post up. But um, yeah, the attention like to it. detail yeah. and the Easter eggs are incredible. So watch it on IMAX mm -hmm. so you can, you can get a better look. And that is a wrap for me. Makad, Lewis, thank you so much for doing this interview. You guys are amazing. I can't wait for everyone to see the movie. This movie is going to break all the records. They're going to make a sequel. And I can't wait to be on set with you guys on the next movie. Right, Simon? Simon, don't run. Simon, we're not done talking. Cool, cool. Speaking of cool, Joe, I'm looking at you, Sub Zero. Hey, there it is. All right. Every time you showed up on the screen, I got chills. Pun intended. My question is, was it difficult filming fight scenes and just moving around while wearing the